Take care, JC. We'll be back in an hour. Okay, Mom. I'll watch some TV till then. Archaeologists have found a number of burial sites in India. One of the most interesting one is in Inamgao. I wonder why the burial sites in Inamgao were interesting. Let me ask this old professor. Uh, where am I? I don't think this is Inamgao. Hello, sir. I'm J C. Can you tell me something about Inamgao? Hello, J C. You can call me Prof. What do you want to know? What's so interesting about the burial sites in Inamgao? Ah, uh, my colleagues and I have found some rather strange graves in Inamgao. Strange graves. The adults were generally buried in the ground with their heads towards the north and bodies straight. See, I have some photographs. Sometimes the bodies were even buried inside houses. That is strange. Yes, it is. We have also found vessels next to the bodies. Why were they placed there? They might have contained food and water for the dead. One man was found buried in a large four-legged clay jar. The body was in a cross-legged position. Where was this jar found? Inside a courtyard of a five-bedroom house. The house was the largest that we found at that site, and it also had a granary. We think it belonged to an important person of that time. Archaeologists must be really working hard to dig up all these remains. Yes, we do. You know, Jesse. Archaeologists find other important things in graves besides the bodies, which tell a lot about the lives of people. What things? Seeds of wheat, barley, rice, pulses, millets, peas, and sesame have been found. People of Inamgao. May have grown and eaten these items. What other things have been found? Remnants of fruits like bear, amla, jamun, and dates were also found. Did they eat mutton and chicken like us? Oh yes, bones of animals like cattle, buffalo, goat, sheep, pig, sambar, etc., with cut marks on them have been found. Indicating that they were used as food, bones of birds, crocodiles, turtles, crabs, and fish have also been excavated. Just one last question: Where exactly is Inamgao? Inamgao is in the state of Maharashtra, near the river Ghod, which is a tributary of the river Bhima. I think my family is back. Thanks, Professor. You're welcome, Jesse. J C, meet Rohit Bhaiya. He'll be staying with us for the weekend. Hi, Rohit Bhaiya. Have you become a doctor by now? Another year left, J C. J C, take Rohit's bag to your room. <laughs> Don't be scared of me. I am Vaco, just a model of a human skull. Rohit uses me. In his medical studies. Uh, hello. I am J C. I have heard that skeletons reveal important things to archaeologists. Is that true? Oh yes. By studying a skeleton, you can tell whether it belongs to a man or a woman. How is that possible? A female skeleton has a larger pelvic and hip bones in order to bear children. The skeleton of a young girl and a boy look the same though. Wow. Scientists, doctors, and archaeologists must be really working hard to study these skeletons. They do. The study of the human body and its parts is called anatomy, and it is an evolved science now. But did you know that skeletal studies evolved two thousand years ago? Really? Yes. A famous physician called Charak during those days wrote a book on medicine called Charak Sahita. In which he explained the skeletal system. How did he get to know about the skeletal system? He counted the joints, teeth, and cartilages in the human body. He arrived at a figure of 360 bones. 
We now know that there are only 200 bones in our body. Oh boy, that's still a lot of bones. JC, can I come in? Rohit is here. We'll talk to you later. Who were you talking to, JC? And hey, what's my skull doing on the table? Your skull's name is Wacko, and I was talking to him. <laughs>